one of the major challenges that usually face new oil palm farmer uh, at the first year of their establishment is this date of seedlings. Uh, a situation whereby you plant 1,000 seedlings on your farm, and before the coverage of a year, you find out that you've lost about 50%, 60%, 70% of this. There are so many factors that can be responsible for this. And that is why on today's episode, as we are entering into another planting or establishment season, uh, I want to shed light on how farmers, especially new farmers, new oil palm farmers, can prevent this kind of occurrence, can prevent the death of seedlings uh, on their farm. Especially in this kind of situation whereby seedlings are on their eye side now. So, but before I do that, uh, in case you are watching me for the first time, this channel is dedicated to promote sustainable and profitable agriculture. My name is Lawa Olusha Lawa. Before I move on to today's topic, I want to tell you once again that as an oil palm farmer, you need knowledge, you need education, and you need like a book that will serve as a guide for you. And I want to use this opportunity to tell you once again that if you are an oil palm farmer or you, want, you intend going into oil palm farming and you've not gotten my book, you are on a long team. You are doing yourself more harm than good. I have the best book on oil palm farming business in this country, Nigeria. Uh, my book is titled How to Create Generational Wealth Through Oil Palm Farming in Nigeria. It's a science. It contains the science and the business of oil palm farming. Let's get to business. On today's episode, I'll be showing you, I will be telling you five things you must do to avoid the death of seedlings on your oil palm farming, at least to the barest minimum of nothing uh, beyond 10%. Because if you have a seedling uh, of more than 10%, you planted 1,000, for example, and at the end of a year, you are replacing more than 100, then definitely something is wrong somewhere. You have to troubleshoot. So uh, what I will be telling you today will help you to maintain it even below it or around 10%. Now, the first thing you want to do when you are planting uh, your oil palm seedlings, uh, particularly at this time where climate change is a problem, is that you have to plant on time. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't say plant early. You must not plant late. That one is constant. But don't also plant too early. Uh, you don't plant immediately you see the rain because the first set of rain usually have some gap. So if you rush and plant at the first rain, uh, it might take another two, three weeks. And before you know it, your seedlings might be dying at that time. So you have to plant on time when the rain is already established, around maybe after the third or the fourth rain of the year. That time is the most appropriate time <clears throat> for you to plant. So which will uh, usually fall around April, April, May. That is the best time to do your planting. So you have to plant at the right time. You plant on time. The second thing you want to do to avoid the death of seedlings uh, is by using mature seedlings. Whenever you are buying your seedling or whenever you want to use any type of seedling, maybe you are the one raising your seedling yourself or you are buying it for some way, make sure you are buying mature seedlings. Seedlings that are more than that are not less than eight months. Any seedling that are less than eight months are not fit to be planted on the field. If you do that, they are still supposed to be at the nursery. And if you do that, you take them to the nursery, the ash condition on the field will contribute to their death. So make sure you are using seedlings that are well above eight months. From eight months, nine months, 10 months are okay for you to plant. And one of the characteristics you will know that a seedling is about eight months and above is that uh, all those there, the, the, the leaves will, will have started uh, tearing and you notice some gone, uh, some, some uh, uh, what do we call it now? Uh, all this spike that can, that can injure somebody. You will find it at the, at the, at the color base. Of Don't get me wrong. Don't go and use uh, over mature seedlings that are more than some people will be asking you, uh, do you have seedlings of one and a half years? Do you have seedlings of two months, uh, two years? There are disadvantages to that also. So just make sure your seedlings are well 
uh, around eight months and above. The third thing you want to do to save your siblings from death after planting is you want to mulch them during the dry season. So whenever you finish planting your seedlings, for example, and you plant your seedling around that kind April, you know, there will be rain April, May, June, July, August, September, October. That is seven months. It will give them opportunity to get their self on the ground and get their self rooted. They will be strong enough that time. But around that kind October, November, December, when the dry season will come in, it is advisable for you to gather dry grasses and you place it around the base of your seedlings this way. Now, what this will do for you is that it will help you to conserve moisture and it will help you to save your seedlings from moisture stress. Do you get it? So it will help you to conserve the water at the base of your seedlings and help them to have some kind of access to water before another rain will come next year, around that kind, three months, four months of dry season. Do you get it? So the number four thing you also have to do is that after planting, you have to fertilize before the end of the rainy season. Don't fertilize your seedlings immediately after planting. Because if you do that, majority of that fertilizer will go to waste. So it is advisable you fertilize your seedlings about two months or three months after planting. Then uh, one of the things that also contributes to uh, the death of seedling is when weed over, overpower or overcome your farm. So this is what you have to do. You have to make sure you put in place uh, proper weeding, uh, both the rain weeding and both the interro weeding. Make sure if this is your seedling, make sure the surroundings of your seedlings are well kept and also the interro spacing on your farm. So you don't allow seedling, uh, your weed to overtake or to overpower uh, your farm. And lastly but not the least, one of the major things that cause uh, the death of seedling is when pests like uh, grass cutter, uh, bush rat attack your seedlings to eat them up. And this is very rampant among oil palm and uh, coconut. So what you want to do at that time, immediately after planting, and you know uh, this kind of environment where you are having your farm is prone to grass cutter and uh, uh, bush rat attack. It is advisable you use a wired netting as a form of protective around your ceiling. This will prevent those grass cutter from attacking your ceiling and eating them up. And there's another, there's a new way whereby people are using a uh, uh, toilet pipe. You cut it into sizes and you put it around the seedlings. So these are the ways if you put all these things in order and you practice them, you'll be able to uh, have higher survival among your seedlings. And you'll be saving yourself from the extra cost of replacement that you'll be doing if, for adventure, you, you have not carried them out. And you might. I've, I've had experience of a farm that lost 90% of their seedlings that they planted. So just make sure you follow through. And I wish you all the best in your farming season. I wish you a prosperous uh, journey. Thank you for your time and see you on the next one. Shishi.